Three, two, one. We're crossing over Locked On Sun Belt and Locked On Badgers in the NCAA tournament. Well, that's, that didn't work out. Hold on. We got to think. <laughs> so I got to open it. I'm all, I'm all screwed up. Got to open it. All right. It's all good. Um, there you go. Three, two, one. We're crossing over with Ryan Herrings of Locked On Badgers. It's Locked On Sun Belt. You are Locked On Sun Belt. Your daily podcast on the Sun Belt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sun Belt, your team every day. We're crossing over with Ryan Herrings of Locked On Badgers. We got JMU of the Sun Belt 12 seed taking on the Wisconsin Badgers of the 5 seed. Ryan, thanks for hopping on. Uh, for those of us who have not seen a second of Wisconsin Badgers basketball this year, please fill us in on how good this uh, five-seeded Badgers team is that, that took down Purdue in the Big Ten tournament. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Glad that we can do this. I think both fan bases are going to get smarter uh, because of this. Certainly, the Badger fans need to learn a little bit more about JMU as well. Yeah, so the the Badgers this year, really interesting team, started off like a spitfire. Beat Marquette, um, beat Michigan State. I, I know JMU did that as well. Uh, I got up to number six in the country at one point where they mm. were just on top of the Big Ten. Uh, people were talking potential one-two seed, uh, offensive efficiency off the charts, and then they hit a major skid. Right, Badger fans went from Gray Guard Coach of the Year question mark to fire Gray Guard immediately in February. Lost um, eight of eight of eleven, I believe. Uh, bad losses to Rutgers. Lost to Michigan, a, a Michigan team that won eight games this year. So they went through a massive slide in February, and then they kind of rebounded. You alluded to it. They beat Purdue in the Big Ten tournament. They also hung with Illinois, a really good Illinois team. Almost almost won the Big Ten tournament. Uh, they're back healthy which was a big part of their February swoon. A lot of their depth was was gone. A couple of key reserves were out. So it's been a Badger team that's been marked with some inconsistency. It is not your typical Badger team. For people who watch a lot of college basketball, you kind of remember those Badger teams that grinded out defensively, you know, move the ball, take 30 seconds for off every shot clock. This is a much more offensive Badger team. Um, hmm. They score in the 70s and 80s pretty consistently. A lot of shooting, more athletic, much more athletic than typical Badger team. They went out and got a big time transfer in AJ Store, who came over from St. John's. He's a 6'6 NBA athlete. Um, doesn't have all the skill set yet there, but definitely someone who will go above the rim and put some people on a poster. He's done it a couple times this year. But defensively, this team has been pretty bad, uh, which has always been a hallmark of Wisconsin, and it's odd. Uh, they give up uh, perimeter defense has been a major issue for the Badgers this year. They give up a ton of shots. They haven't defended the perimeter well. They've struggled with the pick and roll. They've struggled interior defense at times. Uh, so it's really been uh, an odd Wisconsin team from what people are used to seeing in the last 20 years of Badger basketball. Well, something of, a few things what you said there are going to perk up some ears uh, for JMU fans because uh, getting shots up is a good thing. And uh, an interior struggling interior defense could be a problem with a couple of big guys for uh, JMU. Let's get back to that four game losing streak. And what you say, eight out of 11. So was it was it a lack of depth? Was it bench guys? How, how do you again what we saw and went through the, the, the stats yesterday and the scores? You know, they, they don't blow a lot of people out and they don't get blown out, though they did get blown out by Rutgers in one game towards the end of the season. Uh, what happened in that four game losing streak that I also I noticed that they did lose to Michigan? Yeah, that was kind of the question we were all trying to figure out. Like this team that was ranked sixth, you know, how did the wheels fall off so quickly? So some of it was depth. Um, there, there's two guys off the bench that play a pretty big roles for the Badgers, a guard, Kamari McGee, and a kind of a combo guard, John Blackwell. They were both out with injuries. Um, so I think the depth was a big part of it. The starters had to play more minutes. And I think they just, listen, I mean, in baseball, if you're a baseball guy, you know the term the dog days of summer. I think there was a little bit of the dog days of college basketball winter that hit the Badgers where they just, they kind of ran out of gas for a little bit. I think the, again, the lack of depth hurts. And Greg Gard talked about this. He said, you know, you're going to go through adversity at some point in the season. That was kind of our stretch of it. And there was a point where it, it, we weren't sure if we are going to come out of it, but the Badgers really in the last, I would say, five, six games, there was a loss to Purdue in that stretch where they played them really tough. The win against Purdue, uh, wins against Maryland, Rutgers at home. They beat two teams in the Big Ten tournament. Um, they've really kind of snapped out of that. And I think Badger fans now, we, we are seeing shades of that team that was ranked number six in the country earlier in the year. So I think we're pretty confident, uh, I speak as for Badger fans in general, heading into March from where we were in that, that February swoon. 
Uh, we're talking to Ryan Herrings uh, from uh, Locked On uh, Badgers. You can follow him at uh, Ryan and Bucky on X slash Twitter. Uh, all right, so what was the reaction? I swear I heard an audible groan when they announced the Badgers, and they were all excited, and then I thought I heard an audible groan when they announced JMU. What was, what's was what been the reaction to, to playing the Dukes? I, they know how many wins they have now and how good a team they are now, but uh, what was the initial reaction uh, of Wisconsin and Wisconsin fans uh, taking on the Dukes. Yeah, let me read. Uh, this is a DM I got uh, from Twitter uh, from someone who watches the show. He said, I watched, this is from a guy named Ken Payne, who is a Badger fan. Quote, I watched a couple of James Madison games. Now I wish I wouldn't have. Like, so, <laughs> there, yeah, like, there, there, is an, uh, there is a bit of a concern about the draw, right? I mean, James Madison, sure. obviously, a uh, 13 game winning streak right now. I believe they had a 14 game earlier in the year, won 31 games, can shoot the ball off scoring, has some veteran players. Uh, you know, I would say this I didn't have that same reaction, and that's no slight or knock against James Madison whatsoever. But if you're going to be a five seed, you're going to probably play a team that's tricky in the 12 slot. That's just sure. kind of how it typically yeah. works. So I, I didn't go into it thinking that first round is going to be a layup for the Badgers, right? Um, so uh, to me, it's fine. I, th- I think the Badgers present some issues for uh, James Madison as well. I think both sides, you know, probably go into this feeling pretty good. I'm sure James Madison feels pretty good about it, um, especially with some of the defensive issues the Badgers have had. Uh, watching some James Madison highlights, there's certainly shots going up, and that's been an issue for the Badgers to stop this year. So I'm sure they feel good about it, but I, I personally wasn't quite as freaked. And again, that's no slight to JMU whatsoever. It's just you're going to play a tricky team in the 5-12. That, that's how it always works. So I, but there are Badger fans that would have preferred a different 12 than James Madison, though. All right, so where would where would uh, Wisconsin have the advantage? Do they have bigger guards? Or are, they, are they taller in size? I don't know if they're going to be bigger in girth inside because uh, they got uh, – JMU's got a couple of big guys inside. Where would Wisconsin have the advantage? Yeah, so I, I think the Badgers, uh, just looking at James Madison's roster, looking at the, your leading rebounder, TJ Bickerstaff, and I want to get into some of those questions as well. The Badgers just have more size. I mean, like Bickerstaff is 6'9", I believe. I mean, Stephen Crowell, right. the Badgers starting center, is a legit seven-foot, you know, big-body guy. And he, he is a player the Badgers have – Badger fans have kind of struggled with at times because he – struggles against bigger physical guys, but against smaller matchups against players that are 6'9", 6'10". Stephen Crowell is kind of a problem, and he's able to take advantage of smaller post players. He's a really good passer. So what the Badgers like to do is get him in the post, put shooters around him, and then make defenses make a tough decision, right? That's offensive basketball. You make defenses make tough decisions. So uh, I kind of probably kick that back to you a little bit. How uh, What's the concern level maybe guarding a bigger seven-foot guy who likes to operate in the post? Well, that's the thing. I'm not sure. He may be shorter, but I'm not exactly sure how much smaller these guys are. Uh, with Bickerstaff and uh, Jalen Carey, these guys are wide bodies, and they're pretty physical. They're not finesse guys inside. Uh, it may not have been the best matchup to show that. Arkansas State in the in the Sun Belt Championship game just did not have uh, someone to match up with uh, the two guys from JMU inside. Um, if App State had gotten there, then it would have been it would have been size on size. Justin Absent uh, is is really good. I think the defensive player of the of the year in the Sun Belt. And so uh, James Madison's got some size inside. They may not be quite as tall, but I mean they're 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 just as thick. TJ is six nine two twenty. Jalen Carey is bigger at at six six eight two forty five. So they may be shorter. But there is a little bit of girth uh, in there uh, for JMU, so it'll be interesting to see if if Wisconsin, if that is their that is their one thing that they how they can uh, utilize that size inside and JMU at the same time. If one guy can't do it and these guys don't play at the same time, then they do have ten fouls to give to go yeah. inside at Wisconsin. That would be the one other other way to look at it from a JMU point of view. At least that's the way I would look at it. Well, so the Badgers will definitely test that. And it'd be interesting to see um, the result of that matchup. They they will definitely, they have two guys that will post a ton. Tyler Wall is a unique player, been there five years. Um, he, he's going to uh, just post up almost exclusively. He doesn't have a jumper, but he is a handful in the post. He's a kind of a 6'9 power forward, mm. probably seven-foot center. So both are really good passers, both 
at times this season have commanded double teams in the post, which just opens up shooting around the perimeter for the Badgers. Um, that's going to be a big matchup. If if JMU can hold up in the post without having to double, without uh, giving a lot of fouls, uh, that's going to be a big part of their ability to win this game. I think if they have issues in the post for whatever reason, um, it's going to bode pretty well for the Badgers. They're going to get perimeter shots or or free throws out of that. So when they do double team, do they kick it outside or do they look for somebody inside if they get double teamed inside? Yeah, they're, they're really trying to kick. Um, there are a couple of guys who excel at cutting to the rim on this team, but they mm. have a lot of shooters right now, uh, which again, isn't hasn't been the typical Badger team. The typical Badger team has had a couple shooters. This team, Chucky Hepburn, the starting point guard, can hit shots. Klesmith, the starting two guard, can hit shots. Um, AJ Store, the transfer I talked about a little earlier, can hit shots from the perimeter. Blackwall off the bench can hit shots. So they'll kick it. They'll find open perimeter shooters. Um, this is a tough team to guard. Now, this team is also, as I mentioned, defensively has had a lot of issues this year. So this team wins by outscoring people, um, which I think that's a type of game James Madison and with the, your ability to shoot, it, you're not going to feel, I don't think the, uh, James Madison would, would feel out of place in that type of game. Talking to Ryan Herrings locked on, from Lockdown Badgers. We're locked on Sunday. doing a crossover previewing JMU and Wisconsin. All right, so to wrap up with Wisconsin, I think this may be one of the, you know, I know we, get, we got the, the COVID year and everything like that and a lot of guys coming back. But this may be one of those games that both teams have experienced. Usually that was another trait of Wisconsin, right? That they don't get the NBA players. They get the guys that stay three or four years and then leave. But, you know, JMU and Wisconsin seem to both have veteran-laden teams. Yeah, that's a great point. And experience wins in March, right? It's such a big factor. This Badger team is really, really experienced. Um, Hepburn's been the starting point guard for three years. Stephen Crowell's been there four years. Tyler Wall, like I said, has been there five years. Klesman, this is his fourth year. He was a transfer from Wofford. Fifth year? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I mean, they're all experienced. The only guy really who's not going to have that is um, the sixth man on this team, John Blackwell, who's been a revelation. He's been a great, great pickup. He's a, he's a true freshman. But outside of that, just about everybody on this team has years of experience. Um, so, yeah, it's a great point. It feels like that typically, especially experienced guards, are kind of the key usually to those deep March runs. Um, and the Badgers definitely have that coming into this contest. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our good friends over at Nissan. Each week we're picking one team that really stands out, one team that's really pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the new all new, just like any of the all new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. That team we're talking about is Yukon. UConn can only be described as an armada. The top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets, and it's no wonder they landed the top overall seed. They are big. They are fast. They are physical, just like the 2024 Nissan Armada, and they're one of the favorites to win it all, despite having four of the six power or four of the six Power Six Conference champions standing in their way in the East region. They are a powerhouse. Right now, um, take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada. Go find your next big adventure. ShopNissanUSA.com. That's ShopNissanUSA.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by our great friends over at Fire TV, your sports destination. Fire TV is your destination for sports, live games, highlights, in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as Fire TV Stick which you can plug into existing TVs that provides access to millions of movies, episodes, free and live TV, whether it's opening weekend of baseball, which I love. I cannot wait for it. And I'm going to watch that on Fire TV or March Madness. Obviously, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. And they recently created Fire TV channels, which delivers a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports, all for free. That's right, for free, F-R-E-E. Um, Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more. Keeps you up to date on the latest in the world of sports. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos. It's all there. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't, you absolutely need to. Trust me on this. I have one. I use it. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. That's www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, so let's flip it. Let me tell you a little bit about JMU. They lost a total of three games this year, and they only lost to two teams. They lost at Southern Miss, and they lost twice to App State. Both games to App State, who won the regular season in the Sun Belt, uh, were close ball games. 
Uh, JMU, as you mentioned, uh, beat Michigan State. That opened up the season. The only way they got that ball game is, I think, the manager of JMU, uh, his uncle is Tom Izzo. So that was a family favor that didn't go in Tom Izzo's way because JMU was was having difficulty scheduling. Then they had, um, then they had the other game of the year against Kent State, where they were down like five points with three and a half seconds left to go. And if you want to see a ball game that they had no business winning, that was it. Uh, they they hit a three, and then they got an offensive foul, and then I think they got a layup and a foul on that, and they won a ball game at the time. Uh, Kent State had the longest home winning streak in the nation, 22. Now, Kent State wasn't as good as they were supposed to be and then had that unfortunate loss uh, in the MAC tournament uh, this past week. Uh, but JMU gets uh, – they got everyone's best shot. Uh, I saw them come in here. They were actually ranked – when they played the Cajuns, the Cajuns put up a good battle, but they came away with a victory. Uh, they almost lost in the semifinals of the Sun Belt uh, against Texas State. They they put up a good battle, and then they caught a little bit of a break when App State wasn't there. They went up against Arkansas State, and you know they shot 60% in the first half, and then they shot 70% in the second half. And so for Wisconsin fans, they are a three-headed team. Uh, three-headed monster with Terrence Edwards Jr., the Sun Belt Player of the Year, what, 17 and a half points a game or so. He's the top dog. And then you got T.J. Bickerstaff inside and Noah Friedel outside. So those guys, every time I was recapping a game, those are the three guys. Well, what happens, you know, February and March are the time for other guys to step up. Xavier Brown, the backup point guard, had 21 points in the first half in the Sun Belt Championship game. And then they also couldn't stop, Arkansas State could not stop the other freshman, which is the big guy, uh, Jalen Carey. He had about 13 points. And then, then, the big three, uh, then the big three took over in the second half and just and ran away from Arkansas State. I tell you, they ran out of gas, but they were just overmatched uh, in that ballgame. So, um, I, obviously, when, when you play your best, and it's tough to – I don't care who's on the other side. If you're shooting 60% in the first half and 70% in the second half, it, it, you're going to be tough to beat. Um, so that would be if, if JMU has more than two guys rock and rolling offensively, cause they are pretty good defensively. Uh, it'll be an interesting ball game. Do you think there's anything to the, I mean, this game's not going to start until 10 PM on, mm -hmm. on Friday night, right? It's scheduled for nine 40, eight 40 central time, but that's not going to start on time. There's no way this will start. In fact, it very well could start around 10 30. Yeah. Agreed. No, I agree. Go ahead. You you had a question. No, no that was it. Uh, Just I, I was, think it's gonna be. A, I think it's gonna be a late start. I don't know if that has an advantage to anything. Uh, Some belt games are usually around seven o'clock, so I don't know if it's a. Advantage yeah, I, to either I, one. I don't think so. Probably. I mean, the Badgers have played some East Coast games too that start a little later. I, I think that's probably a wash on that one. Talk to me a little bit about Bicker or not Bicker Steph. Sorry about Edwards. Uh, six six guard. I think he's he's been a starter for three or four years as he's a veteran player. What kind yes. of defenders have given him issues this year? I don't know if anybody defenders. I, yeah, I'm not sure if any defenders have have given him issues uh, this year because he can do he can do it all. He can shoot the three, he can drive to the hoop, and he can post up, and he can do the turnaround jumper while posting up. Uh, I, I would try to you know probably go both ways. See if I got a bigger guy who can stick with him, uh, who maybe is just as quick, or see if a smaller guy can guard him. He's tough. And where uh, went to Pensacola in the Sun Belt Championship. He mentioned first how he's matured on and off the court. And, you know, I don't think I don't think he scored. I'm not sure he scored. Well, maybe he had like five points when Xavier Brown was going off. He just got out of the way. And that was something that he needed to be taught. I think his attitude was, you know, I'm, I'm going to go get mine. And if we win, great. If we don't, I still got mine. That's not his attitude this year. If the other guys are hot, I'm going to feed them because I know they're not going to leave me open. So those guys will be open. And a lot of times you know, Terrence Edwards or Bickerstaff or Friedel uh, is going to draw double coverage. And all of a sudden, you know, Xavier Brown or Michael Green, the third are going, are going to the hoop. Uh, Terrence Edwards is, he is your prototypical swing guy that it, that is tough to uh, defend. I would probably try to defend him with a bigger guy. Uh, he may not be the most fleet of foot going to the hoop, but he can still drive to the bucket. He's probably not as quick uh, but he's he is a uh, he's a he's a he's a full basketball player. Can shoot it, can go to the hoop, and can post up. Yeah, his film. I was just watching some highlights of him today. Actually, getting ready for the this show and, and the matchup in North, 
his film's really impressive. Changes yeah. speed really well, good size, good shooting, gets to the rim. Uh, the bad that's another that's gonna be another really interesting matchup. I can almost promise you the Badgers are gonna try Max Klesman on him a lot. Klesman mm-hmm. is an upperclassman shooting guard, really tough, hard nosed kid. Uh, will get after it defensively, but shorter. He, he's more six three ish, you know. So there's going to be a bit of a size advantage there. I, I think that's where the Badgers will start. They don't if that doesn't work, they don't really have a great alternative. Um, mm. The bigger guys on the roster, AJ Store has had some defensive issues this year. Tyler Wall is more of a power forward. Um, that it's going to be a lot of Klesman on him, and that's going to be a fascinating matchup to watch. Klesman has done well at times this year, uh, but there, like I said, there is going to be a height disadvantage there. So that's going to be a fascinating one. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see. Do, do they? Does he elect to shoot over him or try to go past him and and, and try to get the Badgers in foul trouble? Today's episode is brought to you by our good friends, our great friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Listen, say goodbye to your busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game in the tourney. So no longer that first game is out the window. You rip it up and you're done for the day. No, no. FanDuel lets you bet on every game in the tourney, whether you're betting on the big upset or the number one seed or a certain five seed that wears a certain shade of red. Whatever you're doing, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get 200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Um, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Don't forget, baseball's coming up. I cannot wait. I love baseball. NBA playoffs are coming up as well. There is so much you can do on FanDuel. Parlay spreads, teasers, all the different sports. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. And bet on College sports and pro sports, just do responsibly. FanDuel.com slash locked on. What is James Madison trying to do offensively? Are they hunting early shots? Are they running motion? Like, what, what are they trying to do offensively? Uh, yeah, they try to get the open shot. It, it's not the, it's not uh, Arkansas State kind of runs at Alabama. We had two Alabama assistant coaches in the Sun Belt this year, uh, Georgia Southern and, and Arkansas State, and they try to get up a shot as quickly as possible. Uh, JMU is running motion. They're trying to get the best shot. Now, mm. is that, you know, one of the point guards driving and dishing? Is that Terrence Edwards creating and kicking to Noah Friedel? Uh, and Noah Friedel can drive to the hoop. He is not just the guy sitting out there at the three-point line, uh, you know, waiting to, to shoot it. But if he gets hot, that, I mean, you can be in his face, and that's going to be a problem. Uh, so, no, they are looking to get the best shot. Not necessarily the quickest shot, uh, but the best shot. Is, is what their their offense is. Uh, and I think that's what he said, Mark Byington said, in the first half, we were kind of, you know, Xavier Brown was doing his thing and Jalen Carey. And then all of a sudden in the second half, uh, we started doing the team thing. It's it, He wasn't, he was just co- uh, contrasting. He wasn't, you know, insulting it or anything like that. But he said that, uh, yeah, we were doing more of a team thing. So we were getting easier shots and we were, and we were making them. It, let me let me throw a couple of quest- quick questions. So some people knew sure. you were coming on the show uh, I reached out to the Discord. Um, the first one is uh, JMU's depth. Are any concerns there if, if someone gets in foul trouble or, or potentially getting worn down by maybe a more bigger physical Big Ten team, if that even is a concern? Well, I mean, yeah. If I mean, if if one of the big three gets into foul trouble, then I guess Jalen Carey can come in for Bickerstaff, but they don't have anybody. There's no – there's not – the Terrence Edwards is coming off the bench. There's not another guy coming off the bench. If they have – if one of their big three is in foul trouble, that's an issue. And if you get the two big guys in foul trouble, that'll be uh, an issue as well. They do have, again, you know, the Xavier Browns and Jalen Carey, they're pretty good, you know, seven, eight deep. Uh, and I guess Woodley as well um, can play. He's a little bit bigger. But, I mean, there's not I – mean, those are complementary players for the most part, right? They're, they're not the big, the big guns. Um, they, they do have some good depth. But if someone gets into foul trouble, that that's going to be an issue. And and I think Terrence Edwards can once in a while can get himself into foul trouble. Now it usually works itself out for the second half. Uh, but I've seen him sit at times uh, early in first halves. But I think we we kind of hit on the questions about. Uh, I had a couple questions about the size and the paint, JMU. How are they going to defend the post? We kind of hit on that already. Um, last question here, just defensively, what is JMU trying to do? Are they trying to heat teams up? Are they do they play any zone man? What what are they like on well, the defensive end? They'll do all of that. They uh, they slowed Arkansas State down because Arkansas State does like to get it into a, you know, we'll shoot it in the first seven seconds or something like that. Uh, and then they, so they do sort of a zone, soft, full court pressure. They're really not trying to turn you over. 
They are trying to slow you down. So instead of 30 seconds or 25 seconds, you have 20 or 15 seconds to set your offense. I'm not sure that is an issue for Wisconsin, you know, being stereotypical. They, like you mentioned, they like to do get it up and down, uh, but they can't, they can run the offense. So uh, they'll play man to man. They'll, they'll switch it up. They'll play some zone, but it usually is a, uh, a straight man to man. And they did show some uh, pressure both against Texas State and against Arkansas State, just to just to slow them down, not necessarily to try and turn it over. But they can play; they can play some good defense. They are tough. They are tough defensively. Sometimes teams were having tough times just getting Arkansas State. I think early on had a tough time just getting shots off to begin mm. with. So they're they're tough. They're a tough defensive basketball team. You want to talk some keys of the game? Maybe final thoughts. Certainly. So uh, the keys of the game for JMU would be, you know, they got to shoot the three well. And that, that you know, to me, that's like throwing to the tight end. That opens up everything else. If if Friedel and Edwards uh, and Xavier Brown, at one point in time, four for four for three in the Sunbelt Championship game, if they're hitting threes, that's going to open it up for Carey and Bickerstaff and Woodley. They'll be tough to beat. If Wisconsin can defend the three and force them to go inside, that'll be a big advantage for uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, I don't think they'll do that. (laughs) You know, I was listening to, I forget what game it was. Um, It was maybe the Illinois game Wisconsin lost, but the the regular season one, not the one in the Big Ten tournament, but the announcing crew was saying, man, if the Badgers can just fix their defense, there's a point when you're 30 games into a season, you're not fixing your defense or your offense. You kind of are who you are. So I, I expect JMU to get shots. I expect them to score. The Badgers just need to outscore them. And that's really been their MO in, in their wins this year. They've outscored teams for the most part. So what is that like? Because that not has been Wisconsin's MO for the last 30 years. What when did it what what happened? You know, so <laughs> Analytics funny. happened. It's so funny because you spend years just wishing for a little better offense. Let's be a little more explosive. And then you get it and you fall off on defense, right? Like it, it just invariably happens. That's just how it works. Um, and it's not that they don't have good individual defenders. I don't want to paint that out that Jamie's going to get every shot they want. Chucky Hepburn is an excellent individual defender when he's locked in. They got dudes who can defend, but as a system, it just hasn't been as good this year. Um, but I do think if we're talking keys of the game, I'll give you one. When Stephen Crowell, the center, when he's engaged and plays hard, the Badgers are really good. And then there's games where like he, the, the Purdue loss in the regular season, he didn't score as a starting center. I mean, I know Edie's tough, but you can't not score. So there's games where he's invisible and it, he's got to play hard in this one, right? He's not going to not play hard in this game. I mean, listen, he, there's just games where he's invisible and oh, Badger man. fans will tell you that. Um, I would, I would agree. I mean, you're certainly going to play hard in March and I expect him to have a good game. And when he has a good game, when Steven Crowell's locked in, when he's engaged, he's a guy who'll pick and pop too. He shoots about 43% from three when he's engaged, he is a handful and the Badgers are really tough to beat. So that's kind of why I started off with size. How are they going to defend the post? Because if Crowell's getting, if he's getting going, um, I have a hard time thinking the Badgers are going to lose. But it, he's he doesn't always get it going, and that's been kind of one of the big talking points this year for Wisconsin fans. So it will be interesting the size inside, who can handle that, and and if the seven footers can handle the shorter uh, but sturdier JMU guys, that's that'll be an issue for JMU. That is for sure. All right, he's Ryan Herrings. Uh, it should be, I mean, it should be a lot of fun. Unfortunately, we have to wait until the last game of the first round to get this one in. No, I'm excited. I, in some ways, that's better, right? Because then you can enjoy the rest of the games. Because if you, if I, if if I, my team loses early, I don't want to watch anything else. Like I'm done. So I, now I can enjoy everything in peace. Have some wings, have some IPAs, whatever it is, off to the side, and then do that game after seeing a full day of basketball. It's the best time of the year, and I cannot wait for it. As if the 5-12 seed wasn't enough, but you have to hope for some upsets because if there aren't very many upsets, by the time we get to 10 o'clock Eastern and and 9 and eight, and eight 9 o'clock Central time, you're going to be sitting there like, what we do? This is going to be us. Yeah. I will <laughs> say this, though. All the fives won last year. The five swept it last year. Oh. Well, that's, that's not good probably, news this year. Probably, actually probably bad that's, <laughs> that's not so good true. news this year. Uh, so I will cool. leave you for this. I'll, I'll uh, give this to Kara Ritchie. She covers Arkansas State. Uh, the Sun Belt 12 seeds are 3-0 and in their lifetime. Ooh, ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's going to be. It hasn't been many. 
but they are three and zero. It's going to be uh, exciting, man. I appreciate. I think this conversation was great. I think both fan bases probably get a little smarter being able to listen to this type of stuff. So, yeah, this is great. It is. It is win and move on. Last year we did it with Eric Kane in Tennessee, and they they hung on to beat the Cajuns, and they were. <laughs> so we'll see what happens here. Ryan Herrings, a locked on Badgers. You can follow him at Twitter on Twitter at Ryan and Bucky for the uh, JMU fans. Let them know who Bucky is. I love it. Um, Bucky is the the Wisconsin mascot, so Bucky Badger. Um, right. If you notice, kind of have a wooden carved Bucky right there. If you're watching there on you YouTube, go. if you're watching on the podcast, you're not going to or on audio, you're not going to see that. But yeah, Bucky Badger, the Wisconsin mascot, one of the more iconic looking mascots in college sports. I would say I'm a little biased, but I th- I think he's up there for sure. All right, thanks for hopping on, Ryan. Have a great night and enjoy the basketball. Of course, you as well, sir. All right, great. I will figure out on how to get that to you. <laughs> yeah, my way. Um, appreciate it, man. That was good. Good conversation. It was fun. All right, great. Thanks, Ryan. See you, Dave.